Welcome into the studio, everyone. I'm Carly Smith here with Rob Washburn for another week of three things to watch, and it's time to switch gears to the postseason. Rob, it was an outstanding finish to the regular season as we saw three football teams, U Albany, Richmond, and Villanova, all claim a share of the CAA regular season championship with wins on Saturday. Our first thing to watch features two teams who earned national recognition and first round buys in the playoffs. U Albany, who finished the season nine and three, received number number five national seeding, and Villanova, whose record is nine and two, earned the number eight national seed. It was a special day in Albany, New York on Saturday as Greg Gattuso and company earned their first CAA title in program history. And for Villanova, it was their second CAA championship in the past three years. Rob, what have you seen from both of these programs deeming them worthy of that national ranking? Yeah, Carly, both U Albany and Villanova earned national seeds by getting hot down the stretch and finishing the year with statement yeah. victories. The Great Danes extended their winning streak to five with a 41-0 shutout of Monmouth, recording seven sacks and holding the Hawks' powerful offense to just 176 yards. On the other side of the ball, Reese Poffenbarger fired four touchdown passes with three of them to Julian Hicks. Now Villanova posted a 35-7 road win at nationally ranked Delaware to claim the Battle of the Blue for the 15th time in 17 years. Wildcats defense intercepted three passes, including a 69-yard pick six by Danny Abraham as part of a second-half shutout, while Connor Watkins tossed a pair of TD passes to Jaron Hayek as Villanova pushed its winning streak to six. The reward for both teams is a well-deserved week off. The Great Danes will host the winner of the North Carolina Central versus Richmond, go Spiders, first round matchup <laughs> at noon on December 2nd. And the Wildcats will entertain the winner of Duquesne versus Youngstown State, first round matchup at noon, also on December 2nd. This leads us into our second thing to watch. Richmond, who went 8-3 and three on the year, just had a nail-biting <laughs> Capital Cup win against William & Mary on Saturday. The Spiders will host North Carolina Central in the first round at 2 p.m on Saturday and Richmond's in the FCS playoffs for the second year in a row and has won six straight games to close out the regular season. They'll face a North Carolina Central squad that finished the year 9-2 and two with three wins over CAA opponents. Rob, what needs to happen on Saturday for the Spiders to be victorious? Yeah, Carly, for Richmond to have success, it will need a strong performance from its defense to slow down a North Carolina Central team that averaged over 37 points in its victories over Campbell, Elon, and North Carolina A&T. The Eagles feature a dynamic quarterback in Davius Richard, who's thrown for over 1,900 yards and 20 touchdowns and has run for 579 yards and 15 TDs. Now, we've talked about what a great job the Spiders have done forcing turnovers and pressuring the quarterback, and the group led by linebacker Tristan Wheeler needs to continue that trend on Saturday. On the flip side, the defense would be helped if the Richmond offense can control the ball behind the running of Savon Smith and quarterback Kyle Wickersham. The Spiders have scored at least 24 points in all six victories during this recent streak, and they need to hit that number again this week. The Spiders looking to make another postseason run, their last national title dating back to 2008. Let's hear what Russ Huseman had to say prior to Saturday. You know, they're really explosive on offense. They, they're well coached. They know what they want to do on offense. Uh, they take advantages of things that you do on defense. So, uh, you know, it, it'll be a huge test for our defense just to slow them down. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. on Saturday on ESPN Plus or head over to Robin Stadium to watch the action. Now on to our third thing to watch. Let's talk about the Blue Hens. Delaware earned an FCS playoff berth for the third time in the past four seasons and are looking to recapture the national title for the first time since 2003. The Hens finished the year 8-3 and three and will welcome Patriot League champion Lafayette to the tub on Saturday. Lafayette enters the playoffs with a 9-2 overall record and has won eight of the their past nine games. Rob, what do you anticipate seeing in this matchup? Yeah, Carly, for Delaware to get back to its winning ways, the Blue Hens need to reignite an offense that scored over 40 points five times this season. Lafayette brings a solid defense led by linebacker Billy Schaefer that's limiting opponents to 22 points per game and has recorded a ridiculous 35 quarterback sacks. Now, with starting quarterback Ryan O'Connor banged up, the Blue Hens will likely turn to either Zach Marker or freshman Nick Minacucci. While both of those guys are capable, they would benefit from a big afternoon 
afternoon from running back Marcus Yarns. The senior returned to the lineup last week and tallied 97 yards against a strong Villanova defense. He's shown the ability to be a big play threat in the running and passing game with more than 1,100 total yards and 17 touchdowns this season. If you aren't in the offense can get rolling, it will allow Blue Hens defense that has held six opponents to 14 points or less to turn up the pressure on the Leopards. Let's hear what Delaware's Ryan Cardi had to say prior to the matchup. They're going to get in the right call on every play. And it's not just going to be let's line up and, and run something and hope it works. They're going to get in the right call versus that right defense, make you think on your feet uh, formationally and, uh, and RPO wise. And so, um, and then they're going to take their shots when they, when they have them. And um, I think he also does a nice job, um, you know, similar to us as uh, with our, with their trick plays and gadgets and, and such, um, you know, they always have one or two dialed up, ready to go. Um, so we got to be uh, on our toes and ready for those. And Delaware holds a 21 to seven lead in the overall series and has won each of the last 14 meetings against the Leopards. Kickoff at Delaware Stadium is set for 2 p.m. and will be broadcasted on ESPN+. Congratulations to everyone competing in the 2023 FCS playoffs. And for results, recaps, and more, follow along at caafootball.com and on our social media at caafootball.